Hello everyone, uh, we're still doing the uh, Learn Flutter videos. I'll try my best to make this video super short, like uh, uh, like some of the videos you've posted. Um, so we've had this carousel effect implemented right here. Next, what we need to do is to have these uh, show up based on the change we have here. So uh, first of all, we need to have the data in place. So we need to have we need to create what we call uh, the blood chart. So um, let's create a variable of blood called blood charts. And I've already prepared this for you. So this would be like a dictionary, a map, a string along list. So each element maps to a, each string element maps to a list of elements. Of a, yeah. So for example, the A plus. A plus maps to um, so if you're an A plus you can donate to A plus of course itself and uh, AB plus so you could have AB plus like so and then uh, we this is a semicolon so I'll just fill the rest of the information based on the data I find online and uh, that's about it so there we have it um, now we need to display so based on the selection we have here we want to display the corresponding data and before we map everything together let's have this uh, implemented first now we have a ch oh, in the scaffold we have the carousel builder and then we need to display other information uh, the, the the data right below it so this is where we display the corresponding supported blood type groups so in this case we what we can do is that we can have some sort of for loop and for each loop, we can create a text element with um, items, uh, sorry, with uh, bloodshot, bloodshot taking in the item and the index. We can do that. We can very well do that. However, there is another simpler uh, single liner approach that makes things a lot easier for you and it would be good to know. So there's this operator here, which called this. Uh, the separator operator, the spread operator. So what basically this does is it explodes a list of elements you currently you have. So because this list of elements we have strings, if it's exploded, Flutter really doesn't do what doesn't know what to do with them. Like they are strings. Like what am I supposed to do with them? But if these were like text, text widgets, and if I did this they will be displayed right here. But that's not the case here. So what we need to do is we need to use something called the map. So first of all, let's use, let's explode this. Let's go with the, with the basic, uh, I mean, the theory of it. So assuming this blood chart takes in uh, the A plus group. So this is supposed to explode this for us, right? So next, now what we need to do is we need to map this to a text element. So the map takes in a function. So a function, a function that passes in each of the exploded elements. So the, the function would pass in A plus and A B plus. So let's name this blood type. And the blood type would be exposed here. So this function should return a text widget with the blood type text that we passed in through the map, that is passed through the exploded approach uh, method here and of course we need to add it with a semicolon let's reformat this and there we have it it's as simple as it can get let's uh let's try to save this and see we have a plus and a b plus now given that we've supplied this manually we need to make this be supplied i mean on the change that we have here and that's what we've done in the previous set of videos um there is this method within um the page view builder that allows us to change the state accordingly. And remember, we have a stateful widget, so we might as well just make use of that. So we can have a variable called, um, let's call it string, uh, selected blood type, and let's have this be A plus for status, okay? There we have it. And this, uh, on the change, we wanna update this the, the state of this one. So we want to change this on here. Okay, so we have what we've implemented the period the last time. We have the on page changed event. And this, as always, takes in a function. 
and passes in the page index. Remember, in the boarding, we've done something exactly the same. See, on page event, takes in the index, and we, you know, in this case, we could just do the basically we want to. So this page passes in index. So this is the page index. And the only change is we want to set the states, set the states to what we. In the set states, we make the necessary changes, and that is the selected blood type group. We want it to equal to the items. Um, dot in, uh, sorry, items, and we pass in the index, just like that. So uh, now this one updates on page change. The selected blood type changes, uh, sorry, updates on uh, the uh, the change we currently have, and we just need to supply it right here. So selected blood type. So this selected blood type changes on page on page change. So uh, again, very simply put. So this one, uh, the blood selected blood change changes on the page change event, updates the state. The state is then accordingly changes the data. It renders this part here where we display the text. So let's see this in action. Let's save and see this in action. So this is A plus, this is B plus, this is B minus, and the changes happen accordingly. Right. So there's something we could also add to the page view builder, which is the controller. So the controller allows us to have like an initial state. So let's do that. Just like we've we've done in the boarding, we've had the controller right here similarly, and we set the initial page to be zero. So similarly, we could set the initial state to, to land on the A plus. So um, we could just have page controller and we'll name it controller. We could have it equal to page controller. And then we set the necessary, uh, we could have the initial page to be zero. And then we could add some of the other fancy stuff, the viewport fraction we want us to show, 0 0.8. And then we could also have the key page. Uh, let's have it true. Okay. And then the semicolon right to the end. Okay. Let's save. And there we have it. All right. So whenever you load, this would be the initial page right here. A0 and so on. So that's what we we're trying to achieve and we've done it. So that's it for this video, I guess. So that's that for this spread operator as well as updating the change upon the selection of the carousel. All right. Thank you and see you on the next one.